I've got some bad news for you, me, and all the other devs out there who have been coding HTML watermelons. While we've been taking away and automating the jobs of the needy, those dirty data scientists have been working on automating our jobs. The folks at OpenAI have recently released an API that allows you to interface with a AI model called GPT-3. And people have started to play around with this API and post videos about it. One of the more interesting ones is this website where you can describe in English what you want the layout to look like. And GPT-3 will write that in React.js code for you, in case you ever wanted a watermelon button. Now some people see this and go, wow, this invalidates the entire software engineering industry. But I am not one of those people. First off, I'm just incredibly skeptical of all AI and machine learning demos kind of as a whole. It always looks way more impressive in the presentation when they can just carefully craft the input to make it look awesome. And they're not showing all the oopsies where the model misidentifies a red pencil as a hot dog with 99% accuracy. And a lot of times how it works in practice in the average use case is very different than what the presentation looks like. Unfortunately, the API has a wait list, so I can't actually try it out firsthand. But looking at the people who are sharing examples that have gotten access to it, in regards to it replacing developers, I'm, I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid and I really enjoy drinking Kool-Aid. Take for example, this video of GPT-3 answering SQL queries. It's taking plain English and spitting out a SQL statement to fetch the data you want, which on the surface looks really incredible. But what I also think about is the situation when GPT-3 doesn't give you the right SQL. Are you going to have to try playing a guessing game where you rephrase your English sentence, trying different synonyms out until GPT-3 spits out the right SQL? Because that just sounds like an absolute nightmare. The way I look at it is when you are programming, you are giving your computer instructions on what you want it to do. But the thing with computers is they're really picky. And if you're not exact on what you want them to do and in your instructions, it's just not going to work. Hey GPT-3, can you put some peanut butter on my gluten-free slice of bread? Ha ha ha, you are ambiguous with how I should put the peanut butter on the bread. Get pranked, human. So when I see these videos of people using GPT-3 to code, it feels like they're turning English into a programming language, except it has crappy syntax, ambiguous keywords, and no monads. I'd rather write the CSS on the bottom than write the English on the top. Now some of you are probably like, whoa, 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 Ben, slow down. GPT-3 is not for software engineers. It is for business people that don't want to learn a programming language which I find very comical because can you imagine a business executive coding their own requirements in English to GPT-3 and it actually working out? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. GP-3, I would really appreciate it if you could code me up two watermelon buttons. Ah, oh, perfect, you did it instantly. That meets my timeline, but the problem is the shade of pink needs to be a little bit lighter. Not that light, maybe like a little bit darker. Maybe more of a red is what we want. And the green's kind of off. I'm, I'm not really liking any of it. Can you just make it look better? Just all around, you know? Uh, you're just making it look worse. Now it's, just, it's not, even, not, not even remotely good now. It's just... You just you're just a piece of crap, a bunch of ones and zeros, giving me nothing good. Just get just get out of my office. I think business executives will quickly learn that their list of vague requirements just doesn't quite cut it with GPT-3, and they will go back to sending them to their favorite offshore developers. What seems to elude a lot of people is when they use something like GPT-3 or a no-code solution to build something, they think they're not coding when in reality they are. They're just using a different interface to give the computer instructions compared to say just a regular programming language. A programming language is just a tool in a software engineer's tool belt. It's kind of like how an artist uses a brush to paint a picture. And then you have your kid over here who's drawing a lovely picture with some crayons and you tell him he's an artist as well. And when he's done, you tell him, wow, that looks wonderful. 
and you're well on your way to become the next Michelangelo. I think programmers are going to exist for the foreseeable future, but what those programmers use to give computers instructions may change over time. Right now, we are using programming languages and typing stuff in IDEs, but 20 years from now, maybe that means we're using a graphical user interface for everything. With that all said, I still think GPT-3 is a incredible AI model and it has plenty of use cases and programmers are definitely going to be utilizing it to build some crazy things. I just haven't seen anything that suggests that it's going to replace programmers or that it will change the way that we code.